before us. So today we are talking about it is enough. First Kings 17, verse number 1. And Elijah the Tishbite of the inhabitants of Gilead said to Ahab, As the Lord God of Israel lives before whom I stand, there shall be no dew nor rain these years except at my word. Then the word of the Lord came to him, saying, Get away from here and turn eastward and hide by the brook Herith, which flows into the Jordan. And it will be that you shall drink from the brook, and I, and I have commanded the ravens to feed you there. So he went and did according to the word of the Lord, for he went and stayed by the brook Herith, which floweth, which flows into the Jordan. The ravens brought him bread and meat in the morning, and bread and meat in the evening, and he drank from the brook. A nice bed and breakfast. Hallelujah. Verse 7, and it, and it happened after a while that the brook dried up because there had been no rain in the land. Then the word of the Lord came to him saying, Arise, go to Zarephath, which belongs to Sidon, and dwell there. See, I have commanded a widow there to provide for you. So he arose and went to Zarephath. Zarephath. And when he came to the gate of the city, indeed, a widow was there gathering sticks. And he called to her and said, Bring me a little water in a cup that I may drink. As she was going, as she was going to get it, he called to her and said, Please bring me a morsel of bread in your hand. That's when it got real. Water I can get for you, but bread. Verse 12. So she said, As the Lord your God lives, I do not have bread, only a handful of flour in a bin and a little oil in a jar. And see, I am gathering a couple of sticks that I may go in and prepare it for myself and my son that we may eat it and then die. And Elijah said to her, do not fear, go and do as I have said, but make a small cake from it first and bring it to me. And afterward, make some for yourself and your son. For thus says the Lord of Israel, the bin of flour shall not be used up, nor shall the jar of oil run dry until the day the Lord sends rain on the earth. So he went, so she went away and did according to the word of Elijah, and she said, and she and he and her household ate for many days. The bin of flour was not used up, nor did the jar of oil run dry, according to the word of the Lord, which he spoke to Elijah. Somebody say hallelujah. Somebody say it is enough. I come, to, I come to present to you the word of the Lord today that it is enough. Whatever you have in your life, it is enough. Whatever you possess in your hand, it is enough. Whatever God has given to you, it is enough. Somebody declare it is enough. It is enough. It is enough what God has presented to you. It is enough. Look no further. It is enough. Verse number one, Elijah the Tishbite of the inhabitants of Gilead said to Ahab, As, Lord, as the Lord God lives, there shall be no rain for three, and, for, for three years. Go to the book of Hebrews chapter 5. You can hold your place in 1 Kings because we are, we are coming back there. But Hebrews chapter 5. Verse number 17. Hebrews chapter 5, verse number 17. Hebrews chapter 5, verse number 17. Hallelujah. Bible says that Elijah was a man subject to like passions like us. Verse 17. That. Oh. Chapter 11. Did I rewrite it wrong? No, no. Um, Elijah was a man subject to like passions like us, and yet he prayed, and there was no rain for three and a half years, and then he prayed, and there was rain. Where is that? All right, come on, scholars, help me. Is it 417? Nope. Hey, it is appearing in the Bible. James, and I wrote Hebrews. <laughs> Hebrews, James 417. Thank you. Hebrews, James, uh-huh, F for James, James chapter 5, verse number 17, 
the power of technology, eh? You type things down in hmm. James chapter 5, verse 17. Thank you. All right. No. Hmm. Let the church say amen. Ah, 517. Okay. What? Hmm. The devil is a liar. I'm here looking for 17 and staring right at 15. Like, that is not 17. All right, go to 17. James 517. Please make the correction in the notes before we put it on the website. All right. James 517. Elijah was a man with a nature like ours, and he prayed earnestly that it would not rain, and it did not rain on the land for three years and six months. Verse 18, and he prayed again, and heaven gave rain, and the earth produced its fruit. Somebody say hallelujah. Now, Bible says that Elijah was a man subject to like passions like us. And what God is saying is that the same authority and the same power and the same boldness that Elijah had, you also have. Somebody say amen. Bible is saying that Elijah was not super anointed more than you are. Elijah went through the same emotions that you go through uh, because what you have is enough. Elijah went through the same things that you went through, uh, but he prayed because of his relationship with God. He prayed three and a half years and he prayed and there was no rain for three and a half years. And then he prayed again and there was rain. Declare, I have authority. You have authority to speak and to command the atmosphere. You have authority to speak and create because you are just like Elijah. And you have the power and the grace of God. You even have a better covenant. And you have the flow of the Spirit always with you. And the Holy Spirit living inside of you. You have the power of God to speak. The land was not obeying God. The people of Israel were not obeying God. And so Elijah spoke and said, there shall be no rain. And there was no rain. Life and death lie in the power of the tongue. I believe that that is, that is, that is, that is one gift that we have suppressed. Our culture has taught us to be very quiet and sanctimonious in our worship and our prayer and everything. So we have lost the power of declaration. That I can speak and it be so. Even your prayers, you are like, Mm, 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 mm. You are praying in your head because you don't know that you are made in the image of God. But because you know you are made in the image of God, you speak. Because how did God create the world? He spoke. Let there be and there was. And he spoke. And so in order to function in the authority and power of God, you got to speak. Our speaking is not because that is our style. Our speaking is because that is the word of God. If you speak it, you will eat the food thereof. Somebody say amen. And so you must open your mouth. You must speak the word of God. When you are praying, open your mouth and pray. Because, you see, it is not just about the word that is coming forth. It is that with every word, there is an associated breath. And life is in the breath. So when I speak, it is not just words, it is words and the spirit of the Lord was moving over the waters. And the Lord makes it happen by the word and by the spirit. Somebody say amen. So somebody say, I will declare. Sometimes you have to be, I was going to say Takashi. Sometimes you have to be aggressive. Hallelujah. That when you find yourself in a situation, you, you, you speak your way out of it. I have, listen, your bank account is dry and you declare, I am more than a conqueror. I am a multi-millionaire. I have everything I need. Every debt is paid off. You don't look at your account and say, God is not moving in my life. No, you speak because you have a better covenant. Somebody say amen. Listen, Elijah had to speak. Elijah had to open his mouth and declare. You just can't think it. You must open your mouth See, that's what we do, our declarations. You are speaking it. You are speaking to the point that when you find yourself in a bind, all of a sudden you say, you know what, my, my first name is favor, my last name is favor. I mean, it becomes automatic because that is what you have been speaking and declaring. But when you don't speak, all of a sudden you go blank. Hallelujah. Elijah was a man subject to light passion. That means that he felt hungry. He felt tired. He felt weak. He felt discouraged. All of that. 
he wasn't super anointed because he fought the prophets of Baal and, and fire came down. No, he said, Bible says in that you are just like him. If you will pray with the same authority, if you will declare with the same expectation, you will see the hand of the Lord and you will see the move of God in your life. So open your mouth and speak. Don't let anybody, don't let anybody shut you down. Even Christ said that if we, if we don't praise him, the rocks will, somebody got to speak. If you don't speak, a rock will cry out because somebody has to cry out. Something has to cry out. When you get angry, sometimes you just want to vent. Ah, right, just let it out. There is power and conviction in that cry. Hallelujah. So don't keep it in and be like, mm, mm, mm. no, open your mouth and make your declarations. I don't know if you have your own personal declarations. Okay, we have declarations back there for, for favor, for kings and priests, uh, for husbands in the house. And then there is another one has to pray over your house and your, every, it's all right there. And then we also have the book, uh, Prayer Rain. You can get it online. It has declarations in there. But as you do all of that, gather your own collection. Those are written and they are very powerful as you pray with them. But gather your own on the side. I am blessed and highly favored. I have more than enough. Uh, I, am called, uh, I am called out of Africa uh, to... to to, the, to America and uh, to declare the glory of God to the nations. Uh, I am a pastor of pastors. Uh, I am a leader of leaders. Uh, God's hand is upon me. Everything I do prospers. Uh, I walk in excessive wisdom. Uh, I walk in insight and foresight. That must be your declaration. My declaration is not your declaration. So you must create your declaration. Somebody say amen. So Elijah was just like us. He spoke the word of God and then he came to pass. Somebody say amen. Look at verse number two. Then the, word, then the word of the Lord came to him saying, get away from here. Hmm. Get away from here and turn east and hide by the brook Herith, which flows in the Jordan. And there I will feed you. So ravens came and fed him. I mean, the guy was living large. He may woke up in the morning, stretched, and then a raven came and served him food. And then he drank, and then he relaxed. And then in the evening, he was, I mean, he didn't have to be asked for it anymore. It was just delivered. It was nice room service that he was enjoying over there. Hallelujah. I declare that the Lord will preserve you. Declare boldly, the Lord will preserve me. Declare the Lord will preserve me. The Lord will preserve you because he is with you. Isaiah 60 verse 2. Isaiah 60 verse 2. says that darkness shall cover the earth. And gross darkness the people. But the Lord will rise over you. And his glory shall be seen upon you. Somebody say amen. And that you will stand out. That the Lord will preserve you. And that, 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 that even, even when things are dry in the land. Elijah had prophesied and things were dry. Um, but then God preserved and God kept him. That must be your confidence. You cannot run around afraid of the stock market. You cannot run around afraid of when people say, people say, have you heard? People say, and someone said, have you heard? Listen, that is depressing and that is fear. You can't be led by the news. You can't be led by what other people are thinking. And because darkness covers the earth and gross, thick darkness covers the people. But his glory spotlights me. His glory is upon my life. His grace is upon your life. You are set apart. Someone say, I am set apart. I am set apart because God will preserve me and God will have his way in my life. Somebody say amen. Exodus chapter 10 verse 22. The Bible says that there was darkness in Egypt. Moses has stretched forth his hands and there was darkness over Egypt. But get what was in Goshen. Verse 23. They did not see one another. It was so thick you couldn't see. But all the children of Israel had light in their dwellings. You have to understand how special you are. You have to understand um, that you are set apart. Uh, listen, there must be a swag. Uh, there must be an attitude about who you are in Christ. You can't, you can't subject yourself to everything that, they, that everybody complains about. You know, when they're one in the office, you are with them. When they say things don't work, you are with them. When, 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 you, when your uh, family says things don't work, you, you, you are... What, what, you, 
you can't do that because you are fearfully and wonderfully made. He has set his name upon you. His favor is upon you. His spirit is upon you. And so whilst they are fasting, you just walk and say, it's good. It's good. It's all good. You know, why aren't you fretting? No, no, no. I know something that you don't know. That darkness will cover the earth. Darkness will be over Egypt. But in my dwelling, there is a light. Hallelujah. That must be a confidence you have. And that must be an expectation you have. That's the Bible said that thy word is a lamp and a light. So sometimes, even in your own reality, where things feel dark, the light of the word. People don't see how you are walking in this darkness. Um, but there is, a, there, is, there is the word of the Lord. Somebody say amen. I'm challenging you to step out of your natural responses. Step out of this world's response to life. Listen, we have dangerous things to do for God. We can't do great things for God behaving like them. We can't, you, 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 you can't embrace that, enjoy that. And then come to church and say, ah, ah, okay, now I'm going to walk by faith. Now, it doesn't work like that. What you are used to will transfer to every area of your life. And so you must perfect, I am different. You must perfect, God's hand is upon my life. You cannot soar as an eagle if you keep hanging around turkeys. Hallelujah. Sometimes you have to realize that the people around you are just dark and blind. You know what? I, I, I will come and minister to you, but I'm... I, I, I can't take your word. Because when God says I should move, or when God says I should wait, you don't get it. And if I'm to try to make you happy, then I'm going to be stuck. So then I'm going to be led by the word of God. Have the confidence that God will preserve you. If he has to send ravens, he will send ravens. If the sun has to stand still, it will stand still. If there must be a way in the Red Sea, he will make it. But God will preserve his own. It says, you will not fear the arrow by day, nor the pestilence by night. With your eyes, would you see the fall of the wicked? That is God's promise. And that must be a conviction. That it doesn't matter what they do. No harm shall befall me. Somebody say amen. And so Elijah is being preserved all nicely and all well and and then and then verse number 7 and it happened while and it, and it happened after a while that the brook dried up because there had been no rain in the land see that is where that is where questions come up i don't know about you but that's where i start, I start having questions uh because there had been no rain in the land but the brook was running before right why can't we why why can't we keep the the, the party going? <laughs> I mean, why the party gotta stop? We already knew the brook was, I mean, I mean, the land was already dry. We knew that rain wasn't falling. And God, you were providing. You were doing supernatural things. You were, I mean, ravings and and, and checks were coming from nowhere, and groceries were coming, and bills were getting paid. And then, Lord, why can't we just chill here? Why, Lord? Aren't you the same God who sent the raven? Can you just send a little water to me? Just forget about the land. Just when God begins to interrupt what you are comfortable with, when God begins to move in your life in a way that makes no sense, you're like, God, this was good. For this I prayed. For this you are supplied. Now leave it alone. Let it be, Jesus. It is fine. You can take your hands off now. We can just enjoy this. But God has a greater intention. Somebody say amen. God has a greater plan for your life and you must be willing to submit yourself to when God allows the brook to dry up. I, I was in Guyana and I called my wife and I told her, honey, it is time to move. At that time, I had already um, lost my job. So I was on the final, you know, but, but God was providing though. Somebody came, check, $1,000, check, $2,000. I'm like, hey. This is great. This is awesome. And then I was in Guyana in prayer, and God says it's time to move. And I was like, ah, yeah. Keep doing 
what you are doing. <laughs> you are the great and mighty God. Keep sending ravens. Keep providing. And then I called her and said, honey, I believe it is time. Can you believe it? We moved. Since then, not one check him after that. Not one. You would think maybe, no, $10 was like, not one. God will preserve his own. Somebody say amen. And so when he dried it up now, is we, are, we are now in a situation, right? <laughs> a situation is okay, but a situation, <laughs> you know, you still got a problem. I don't know if, 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 if you have any questions about things happening in your life. But you're asking, Lord, why? God, this makes no sense. Aren't you the same one who was doing everything okay? Aren't you the same one that healed? Aren't you the same one that made a way? Why am I going through this right now? I believe, I believe that's a place that we, we all find ourselves often. But this is, this is the very important thing. That for God to do an unusual thing in your life, he will give you an unusual instruction. For God to do an unusual thing in your life, he will give you an unusual instruction. Look at verse 8 and 9. It says, go to the woman of Zarephath, go, and then a widow will provide for you there. It's like, God, why don't you keep providing? Why do I got to move? Why do I got to relocate? Why, why, why? Tell with me to the, the, the book of Isaiah, Isaiah 55. Keep, keep holding your, 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 uh, your place in 1 um, in Kings. Isaiah 55, verse 8 and 9 says what? For my thoughts are not your thoughts, <laughs> nor your ways, my ways, says the Lord. For as the heavens are higher than the earth, so are my ways higher than your ways, and my thoughts higher than your thoughts. Are we willing to submit ourselves to that? Because sometimes we, we, we talk to God like he doesn't understand our, our American. We talk to him like, God, you don't understand the 21st century of, you know, internet and cell phones and life. Like, you know, we still see him as the God of the, the ancient of days. As old as we see him thinking of, you know, older, like God is still there. No, God is he's the same yesterday. And so he's everywhere. He says that my ways are not your ways and my thoughts are not your thoughts. When God is about to do something unusual in your life, he will interrupt your comfort zone. He will move you into a place that you are not comfortable and he will give you an unusual instruction. An instruction that makes no sense to you. An instruction that requires you to let it go. Walk away from the comfort. He was doing fine. He was chilling. He didn't want to talk to anybody. He didn't want to hang with anybody. He was fine by himself. And then here comes God saying, move. Go for a widow. Who, and, and, and knowing that he's the one that prayed, he knows very well that there is no rain over there. So why are we leaving this comfort zone uh, to go to a place where I know they are struggling? Makes no sense, does it? It makes no sense when God gives you an instruction and, 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 and you are trying to figure it out, but, but you understand that his ways are not your ways and his thoughts are not your thoughts. So, okay, God, God, I believe you, but why? God, give me something to go off of. And many a times he will give you nothing, right? He just gives you the instruction and just says, go. And like, like he asked the, the people of Israel, walk around six times and be quiet. The seventh time, say something. Why don't we start shouting the very first day? And why do we have to go seven times on the seventh day? Every day we went one time. Oh, that was good. I feel great. Let's just rest. Six days, it was good. On the seventh day, we had to do it six times. And then the seventh time, we had to scream. Makes no sense. When God told Gideon that the people you have are too many. Shrink them down. 300 is enough. It is enough. And so when God tells them, and they have to, to go drink water, which part of, of, of the United States uh, uh, Army military training and, 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 and uh, 
and selection requires you to go drink water. It makes no sense that the test of a warrior is in the drinking of water. How you drink the water will determine how you will function as a soldier. It makes no sense. Get yourself comfortable. If you're going to walk in the supernatural instructions of God and walk in the supernatural manifestations of God, if you're going to see revelations manifest, that make no sense. You must be ready for God to give you unusual instructions. It must be comfortable. You must settle in. And sometimes you, you, you must swallow your why and say, yes, say yes, Lord. Because your why just delays you, it frustrates you, and you're like thinking all these thoughts. Just let it go and say, Lord God, let it be unto me according to your word. Remember the time where, where Jesus went to the um, Samaritan woman and then said, give me a drink. And this whole time, give me a drink. I can't give you a drink because I'm a Samaritan and you are Jewish and we don't hang. And he says, yes. What is that? And then he says, the water that I have will last forever. Your water is useless. You see what I'm saying? I mean, like, 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 like the whole interaction makes no sense. You are the one asking me for water. Only to tell me that you have water that is better than mine. <laughs> but our God is unusual. Our God will give you unusual directions, unusual moves. Lazarus is dying. Can we go now? Oh, no, he's just chilling. Let's just relax. And then the guy dies. He's buried. And then he shows up. Ah, our God will give you unusual instructions. Get comfortable with unusual instructions. Like I have raised all my money. Thank you, Lord. Oh, I take my thank you back because you asked me to give it away. You think you have finished. You think, yes, the Lord has broken through. The Lord has heard my cry. And then he requires you to give it away. Because it is enough. And the, and the woman of Zarephath, all I have, alas, did none. That was, that, was, that, was, that was some dangerous bread. Oil and flour, that's it. Flat, no yeast. Seriously, eh? <laughs> dry bread. But that was all she was able to make. But God says, it is enough. What he is asking of you, it is enough. What, what you are sacrificing to him, it is enough. What he has put inside of you, it is enough. Somebody say hallelujah. So when God gives you an unusual instruction, embrace it. When God gives you an unusual instruction, begin, begin, begin prayer meetings every Friday. Lord, do you know that this is America? People don't mess with their Fridays. Really going to pray on, on, on Friday? Like, Wednesday would have been cool because people, church folk know Wednesday is church time. Friday night! We're hitting town, man. It's movie night. It's chilling night. But then you obey God. Even if it does not make sense. How many of you have, have received unusual instructions from God? Instructions that make no sense. Instructions that make no sense. I go, I go visit a friend and I'm hang, and just chilling. No, this was when, when I was in San Diego and, and we we're just chilling and it was cool. And then God says, I, I, in my spirit, I felt like, give this right. I was like, okay. Mm, yeah, we can do it. And then out of his audacity, our God doubles it. I'm like, hmm. But he gives you unusual. All of a sudden, you begin to float in there and move in a whole different dimension. All of a sudden, God prepares you to let go of your limitations because you have come to a place where your thoughts can no longer limit him. He's like, you know what? I'm tired of thinking about this. I'm tired of fighting you. Whatever you want. And then he's like, now we can walk. Now we can move forward. Somebody say amen. Now, do you realize that God... In verse number 10 through 12. Let's keep going. So he arose and went to Zarephath. And when he got to the gate, a widow was gathering sticks. What is this? You are supposed to be feeding me. You are supposed to be set up already. 
but she was gathering sticks. Give me a cup of water. She said, cool, I can do that. And then she says, give me bread. And then she starts complaining. Can you imagine if that was you? God says, you know, leave your comfort zone. I'm moving you somewhere where you'll be taken care of. Okay. I know that at the least, he will repeat what I have and then give me better. I don't expect God to push me back, right? Takes me from what? Glory unto glory. The Lord is perfecting and that which concerned me, right? And God always wants the best for us. And so he's like in his mind, like, okay, you know what? I gave up the, you know, the bed and breakfast, but you know what? <laughs> God is going to supply this for me. And so it's going and then, she, okay, she's gathering sticks. That means she has no sticks at home. That means she is not expecting me. Okay? And then she says, give me water. She says, cool. Okay. There's no way in the land, but we got water. Give me bread. And then she starts complaining. Can you imagine what Elijah was feeling? God, apart from the unusual instructions, he will give you an unusual partnership. God will give you an unusual partnership. And that will force you to understand that man looks at the outward, but God looks at the heart. God will put you with somebody, put you in a situation where you are like, I just don't get it. This, 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 this cannot be. And God says, it is. And you don't understand it. It makes no sense to you because you're like, you know what, I'm way past this. And God says, no, this is exactly where you're supposed to be. An unusual partnership. A man who has gone from the comfort of working supernaturally to someone whining and saying, I don't have bread. But, she said, but he said what? Go and make me. You remember when we talked about the altars? When God asks you to sacrifice something, it is always a setup. From the testimony, when God asks you to sacrifice something, it is always a setup. So God will require an unusual, God will give you an unusual instruction, give you an unusual partnership, and then ask you to make an unusual sacrifice. Has God ever asked you to give more than you think you have? When God asks you to give more than you think you have, when God asks you to give more than you think you have, I come to encourage you today that what you have is enough. Someone say it's enough. And when God moves you out of your comfort zone, mm, you realize that all of a sudden it is not about you. Because he was fine. The only reason why God moved Elijah was not for Elijah. Because the woman would have died if Elijah had not left his comfort zone to go. Because God was already providing for Elijah. Elijah was cool, but for the sake of the woman. So when God moves you, go beyond yourself. Sacrifice yourself and say, Lord God, there is something greater. There is something mightier that you are doing that I don't see. Because now... The family is preserved. The woman is preserved. And in all of that, Elijah gets his lifestyle back. The bed and breakfast is restored. Now he's even better. He's, he's not in a cave anymore. He's now in a house. He's been upgraded. Hallelujah. Um, but it is not about you. Someone say, it is not about me. It is not about you. And so let me, let me, let me, let me, let me give you this equation or this, or this thought. Your faith plus your seed is enough. Stay with me. My faith plus my seed is enough. God brought Elijah's faith in and the woman's seed. That combination was enough. That combination was enough to activate the power of God. I tell you, church, that the faith that you have in your heart, um, that God will supply every need, um, that God will make a way for you, that God is with you. With whatever seed you have, whatever gifting, whatever ability, it is enough. Stop looking outside of yourself uh, that one day when I gather enough of this, uh, then I will do this for God. You know what? When, 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 
when everything is figured out, God says what you have is enough. Actually, you know why what you think what you have is small? Because in the sight of God and in the comparison with God, it is small. So there's nothing wrong with knowing that it is small. Just know it is small and it is. Because, I mean, I, I, I do this visual, you know, Google Maps, right? So imagine you are here in Norfolk, right? Look at you in Norfolk. We don't even see you, right? And then we make it to Virginia. You alone. And then you alone in the U.S. You alone in the world. You alone in the universe. You realize that uh, you are small. Can we accept it? Sometimes we think too highly of ourselves. You think your steps to the hallway is activating. <laughs> Everybody must bow to you and worship you because of your new outfit, of your new car, of your, or, or of your new house. And so I think people must bow. I got me a degree, okay? Yeah, listen, listen, calm down, calm down. Like I said, do, do not think highly of yourself that you ought to. Hallelujah. So what I have in my hand is not, it's not big. It's just enough for my children, I and my child to eat, and then we die. But then God says, it is enough. You are enough. Say, I am enough. If there's one thing that has tortured humankind and that has tortured believers, it is that conviction that I am enough. Because everything and everybody around you, around you tries to remind you how not enough you are. How, how there's something lacking. How, how your bank account is not where it's supposed to be. Or your relationships are not where they are supposed to be. Or, or your walk with God is not where it's supposed to be. There's always a reminder of something you want. There's always, you know what, if I had that, and, and they do a very good job in the commercials telling that to us. If you only had that car that you can't afford, your life would be great. Mm-hmm. Yes, man, I have this house, a wonderful house. I have a wonderful car. I have, a, I have all this around me, a wonderful pool, and I'm in debt up to my eyeballs. Somebody, please help me. What you have is enough. What you have is enough. Some of us are waiting before we move to gather more. It is not the size of what you have. It is the fact that God... Step away slowly. It is the fact that God has spoken his word. Look at the last verse. The bin of flour was not used up nor did the jar of oil run dry. Why? According to the word of the Lord, which is spoke by Elijah. According to the word of the Lord, you are enough. According to the word of the Lord, you are the apple of his eye. According to the word of the Lord, you can do all things through Christ who strengthens you. So when God gives you an unusual instruction with an unusual partnership, requiring an unusual sacrifice, and just understand that he is with you. Somebody say amen. And that because he has already spoken his word, his word has already arranged everything for you. His word has already prepared everything ahead. It's been arranged. Anyone who can arrange a dinner 6,000 years in advance is amazing. He says, go to this man and tell him that uh, the, the reservation I made is time. And he says, yes, it's been set up. The upper room. Jesus sent them and he said, it's been there. It's, yes, it's, it's ready. How about your life? Say, I am enough. Declare boldly, I am enough. Say like you, you, you have boldness. I am enough. And I have enough. Because listen, practically speaking, what you have in you compared to other people, it is small. Compared to the majesty of God, it is small. But in the hands of the master... Like five loaves and two fish, he's able to do great things with it. 
So all of a sudden, because we admit that what we have in our hand is small, our confidence is not in the size of what we have. Now our confidence is in the power of God to multiply. That his ways are not my ways. His thoughts are not my thoughts. His power is beyond me. His grace is beyond me. Hey, and, and if I remember, he caused the ravens to give me food. He provided my goodness. The power of God is able to hit anything and make it great. The power of God is able to hit the mustard seed and make it dangerous. So stop looking beyond yourself like you are inadequate. Mm, speaking to somebody now. Stop looking around yourself like you are inadequate, that you are incomplete. Because your God is with you. Uh, this, this past two days, I was, I was very mellow. I told my wife last night, I was like, says, how are you? I said, hmm, <laughs> I'm mellow. <laughs> when you see the vastness of the trip, it, you see, it is not, we are, we are not going on vacation. We are going to Puerto Rico to see the advancement of a church plant. And if I can remember a church plant, it is no easy work. <laughs> and then going to a land where I speak a little of their language, bonjour, comment ça va, fini, that's it, stop it. Say no more. To see what God will do. And, and to just do all of this travel in two weeks, you start to feel inadequate. Why me? Really? What am I bringing that nobody else can bring? Oh, oh, oh. I have not prayed enough. Eey. I don't have enough anointing. Eey. I have not raised enough funds. All of a sudden, the things that remind you that you are inadequate, start popping up. God has an assignment upon your life. And he says that what you have is enough. He has moved you out of where you were, and he has brought you into this place, not for you, but for somebody else and to impact destinies. So get over yourself. Get over everything that's about you. Just know that God will preserve you. Somebody say amen. But now it is time to walk in the supernatural. Listen, if we want to walk and see the supernatural power of God, what you have is enough. The thing is, can I ask you this question and then we'll pray? What you have in your hand is enough. The question is, are you ready to give it away? You may think it's not enough. He says it's enough. Would you give it away? It's easy to give when you have abundance. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Bless. And then bless. And, but, you know, I got extra. You know, you take two. I mean, you just, just bless. When, 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 lady, you feel me? When, when, when the budget is tight <laughs> and things are low, all of a sudden you think twice. Is this the Lord or is it me? <laughs> okay. <laughs> is this the devil or is it me? Am I just imagining it? No, if it is God, is it now or later? It says now. Like now, now, or now in a few days. <laughs> you start debating. You start fighting God because there's a limit. Hallelujah. But that's when God shows up. I'm trying to press you and encourage you um, that you are in a tight place and you are in the best place. When things are tight, you are in the best place. When things are rough, you are in the best place. When you don't have everything, you are in the best place. And the thing about God is that he will ask you for it. I can imagine Elijah, who has been having two square meals a day, you know, doing very good, uh, says, uh, make some bread for me. It's not looking for a little slice. Make some bread for me. That means bring water. Give, feed me. So at least half of her bread, of her flat bread, right? The bread, uh -huh, okay, okay. <laughs> the bread will be flat, right? Help me, because there's no yeast. Those of you that bake, is the flour, and then oil. I mean, it's it's, it's healthy, right? <laughs> 
Throw the fuck. This nasty. Yeah. The party adds some flavor to Okay, okay, let's do, let's do this gospel here. Hallelujah. <laughs> the party is, is anointed of God, okay? <laughs> but you see, it is not only the fact that she did not have enough of the flour and enough of the oil. It's the fact that whatever she made together still felt inadequate. It is one thing if she had just a little uh, 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 flour and then some, some yeast and then how do you bake? Some egg? Some, okay, so you know, you guys, talk, oh, see, there are, to exactly, so it would be okay if, if what she had, though it was little, was enough to do something good. The thing is, it was low in quantity and quality. Has anybody felt like that? Today we break out of that in the name of Jesus. Today we break out of that in the name of Jesus. You are enough. What God has put inside of you is enough. Where he is sending you, you are enough. Where he has placed you, lady, you are enough. And you have everything you need. Architecture, that, that, that is the best math degree, cry. Don't let, don't let anybody tell you that you need a math degree. You need architecture to do this. <laughs> Hallelujah. Listen, what you have is enough. When you have never done anything and God says, go ahead and do it, just jump up and say, Lord God, I know you will teach me and I know you will guide me. An unusual step, guys. The walk of faith. To see the manifestation of God. Be ready for an unusual instruction. An unusual partnership. How did David get to the throne? Jonathan? Really? The son of the king gave me the hookup to take his place. Unusual connection, guys. Unusual connections. Unusual. Expect God. And, and in, 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 in many ways and in all ways, do not discount the person that God has partnered you with. That's, 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 that's unfortunately human nature. My expectation is because of what I see, I see you outside the gate and you are picking sticks. What? And you, and you are supposed to take care of me? I ask you for bread and you are telling me you only have oil. No, I can't take this negativity. I am an anointed prophet. <laughs> I, do, I do mighty things. I don't have time for this. How can God? How, God, how could you? Do not degrade because he uses the foolish things of the world to confound the wise. The, the smallest and the littlest things God will use to open your eyes now. Begin to see the things that God has placed inside of you. Some of you are amazing bakers. Some of you are amazing sowers. You are amazing creators. And you are saying, you know what? Maybe, you know what? I need more. What else are you waiting for? What else are you waiting for? God has given you everything in your hand. And you are saying, Lord God, I just need, I just need somebody with a big company to tell me I'm great. And then to bring, and God is saying, it is enough. Move with what I have given you. Move and watch me provide. I am expecting supernatural things. Someone say, I'm enough. 